I've been working on this Honda Beat for several years. After making the turbo manifold, it's been sitting in the garage just collecting dust. Because I don't have that much free time anymore. But I'm committed to making more content and finish modding the Honda Beat. I'm thinking a complete exterior refresh, like custom wide body panels, maybe a new front bumper. But before I can start designing the wide body in CAD, I need to get an accurate model of the car. So instead of spending time with my family, I'm going to show you the process of 3D scanning my Honda Beat. In a previous video, I scanned the rear bumper and made these 3D printed reverse light pods. And for that, I used a hobby grade 3D scanner. And I had to do some crazy stuff to get a good 3D scan. So this is trash. I'm I'm just kidding. I still need it. But I'm not going to use this. I'm grown now. So I'm going to use a different class of 3D scanning technology. A professional grade 3D scanner with hybrid blue laser and LED tech that's accurate down to 40 microns. It's so efficient it could scan up to 1.2 million points per second. Built for reverse engineering so no need to do crazy things to get good scans. Built by the team at Shining 3D and perfected for someone who tinkers in their garage making YouTube videos once a year. This is none other than the Einscan HX. Before we start scanning, I gotta prep the surface of the car. Transparent surfaces like the windshield and the windows, and also the shiny bits like the lip of the wheel, don't get picked up by the lasers very well, so I have to dull them out first. I like to use this cornstarch and isopropyl alcohol mixture in a spray bottle. The ratio doesn't really matter, but a little bit of cornstarch goes a long way. And you should probably use a funnel so you don't make a mess like I did. I should also clarify that the blue laser tech on this scanner has the ability to pick up black and shiny surfaces without scanning spray. But spraying all of these surfaces helps the process go a little bit faster. After a few minutes, the alcohol evaporates and leaves a thin film of cornstarch. So this scanner uses these tracking dots to, you know, track its position. But we need to use a lot of them because the scanner needs to see at least four at any given time throughout the scanning process to be able to keep its position. And the last thing I want to do is stick hundreds of them all over the car. So I made the scanning net. Oh, he's already tangled. Basically, it's a net that keeps birds away from your garden and I 3D printed little standoffs that clip onto the net and I stuck tracking dots on top. I can use this to drape over a large section so I don't have to stick hundreds of trackers all over the car. The drawback with this method is the scanner picks up the net anywhere it's laying directly on the car. If I just needed a general envelope of the car and the details didn't matter as much, this would be totally fine and I could probably erase this in post using a mesh editing software. But I don't have time for that in this video. So my next approach is to use these 3D printed tracking pyramids where I could put targets on all five sides and a magnet underneath. The drawback is it doesn't cover as big of an area as the tracking net, but at least I don't have to put hundreds of trackers all over the car. The problem with this is that I need to print way more because the scanner loses tracking with the amount I have now. I think I would need at least double or triple the amount. Or I need to cut it up into smaller sections. A bigger problem is that it leaves these large voids in the scan data. The software is able to patch these holes, but these artifacts might get in the way of the overfender design fit out when I model it. Since these two methods didn't give me the results I wanted, I took a moment to do more research and after a while, I figured out the best thing to do is stick hundreds of tracking targets all over the car. It just gives a cleaner result at the end with minimal post-processing of the scan data. Plus, if I use these reusable magnetic tracking targets, it doesn't seem as wasteful and I could feel like I'm saving the environment. With the prep work complete, I can start scanning. In the X-Scan software, it gives you two choices. Rapid mode uses structured light and performs best on objects that have a lot of unique features, like a transmission case. So you don't have to use tracking targets. But since the Beat has mostly flat panels, I'm going to use laser mode. For a whole car scan, I typically use a lower resolution, like 1.1 millimeters. This measurement refers to the distance between the points captured by the scanner. 
If I were scanning something like a spindle with mounting holes and bearing surfaces that have specific tolerances, I would choose to go with a higher resolution like 0.2 millimeters and get as much data as I can to help when extracting reference geometry. For this, the fit doesn't need that kind of accuracy and a lower polygon count gives my computer a fighting chance to process all the scanned data since it's gonna be a lot. Starting at the left headlight, I'll work my way counterclockwise around the car so I could keep track of where I scanned. When I move from section to section, I make sure to have a little overlap so it helps with aligning different scans together. No matter what grade of scanner you have, your limiting factor will be the computer you're using. Scanning takes a lot of computing power, so pay attention to this number down here. I found that 10 million points is a limit my computer can handle reliably without bugging out, while still leaving me with all the features that I need. In order to stay around this number, I removed all the windows from the scan data. With all the sections scanned, I'm left with this jumbled mess that I have to align. The software alignment feature is pretty great. 99% of the time, it's able to align automatically by features. Every now and then, it doesn't do a great job, so I have to do a manual alignment mode by picking marker points. I choose three markers that the sections share, and it aligns it perfectly. This is why I like to have a little overlap between the scanned sections. Not only does it help with the auto alignment feature, it also gives you reference if you need to do it manually. With everything aligned, I save the mesh as an STL file, which I could then import into Fusion 360 and start modeling the fenders, which I'll do in the next video. Recently, Shining 3D came out with a new scanned CAD software called XModel, and it comes in two flavors. The light version gives you all the tools you need to edit the mesh, like aligning it to the coordinate system, deleting features, and extracting primitives. The Pro version unlocks all the 3D modeling features, so it's an all-in-one reverse engineering tool. You can download a trial of XModel and get more info on the 3D scanner I'm using by heading to 3dwonders.shop. It's a one-stop shop for all your 3D scanning needs from beginner to industrial-grade scanners, tracking targets, sprays, and even software. You could sign up for their newsletter for the latest deals, and I'll leave the links for everything down in the description. The Einscan HX that I use in this video is now upgraded to the HX2. You get more than twice the scanning speed from 55 to 120 frames per second with the same great accuracy. Use this code to get store credit towards the new Einscan HX2. And that's pretty much everything I learned. Whether you have an Einscan HX or a hobby grade 3D scanner, I hope these tips were helpful for you. So I still have a lot to learn about using the scan data to make custom wide body panels and even reverse engineering parts for the beat. So if you have any tips, make sure to leave a hateful comment down below. I want to give a huge thank you to 3D Wonders for sending us the 3D scanner to try out. It's really exciting for us to work with an amazing team of experts and have an opportunity to make videos just like this. And it's all thanks to you guys for watching, liking, and sharing our videos. So thank you.